Hello everyone, this is Saima at Holistic Happiness Academy and today's video is about red flags that can tell you if there is a mental health issue. At the Academy, I always encourage people to take a proactive approach to their mental health. Sometimes when things keep adding up, keep accumulating, one can actually have a much more worse breakdown than if one takes care of themselves from an earlier point in time. So a wellness approach is a proactive approach and that's what I strongly encourage everyone to do. Here are top red flags that you or your loved ones or someone you know may be suffering from some mental health concern. Try not to diagnose anybody. Try not to tell people that, hey, you know, you may you have a mental health issue. That doesn't usually go down very well. This list is by no means exclusive, and it's not necessary that somebody should, somebody should have one or any of them to actually have a mental health condition. This is just very general, helpful advice for someone who wants to be more aware about their mental health, their family's mental health, or the community around them, or even their workplace. The number one sign that there could be a mental health issue for which some help is needed is emotional dysregulation. Now it's a big word, but what it's really trying to say is that somebody is unable to calm themselves down. They're unable to relax or they have to spend a lot of time in order to relax themselves. During this time when they are feeling agitated or they're feeling these in intense emotions, they may be you know, inclined to make poor choices. Uh, impulsive choices, self-medication through any kind of drug or alcohol. And sometimes when people have an undiagnosed mental health condition, this could be a habitual pattern for them. They may be self-medicating. So the second sign is numbness, not being able to feel anything. And sometimes that is the reason why people may turn to something extreme in order to be able to feel something. The third sign is feeling irritable, ruminating, like really dwelling on some conversations or something that happened in the past, thinking about that all the time or frequently, uh, something they can't do anything about and so rumination is not going to help them. Um, being miserable for a long time after that event is over. So something's over, something's happened, but you know somebody's uh, you know thinking about it a lot and they're ruminating. That's actually a very uh, common sign that there could be some mental health issue that needs to be uh, healed. And uh, addictive behaviors. You know, like sometimes it's not like an addiction for a drug, but it can be a food addiction. It could be internet. It could be porn. Uh, it could be um, sugary foods or even pop, soda, for example. Third red flag is sleep issues. Being unable to sleep through the night, waking up frequently through the night uh, in a state of agitation. Uh, for example, sweating, um, nightmares, frequent nightmares, night terrors. Um, mental health breakdowns in general can occur after a period of very poor sleep 
or not being able to sleep at all for several nights in a row. These are signs that there is extreme stress psychologically um, or you know spiritually there's a lot of stress. The fourth one that is less uh, you know like it can be quite hidden is difficulty focusing not being able to focus on a task constantly diverting distracting uh, is is a is a sign a red flag that there could be a mental health issue uh, connected to that chronic fatigue always feeling tired so that would be the fourth sign always being tired i don't have any energy uh, that could be a nutritional issue, it could be a medical issue, but it also could be an emotional or mental health issue. And so it's important to kind of, you know, not ignore that. Sixth issue is chronic pain or psychosomatic illnesses. Now that's a very, uh, you know, big word psychosomatic and some people think that means that they're faking it. That's not what I mean at all. Nobody's faking pain. It's just that sometimes emotional pain can present as physical pain. In fact, there are, there are uh, some experts believe that up to 90% of physical pain has an emotional uh, connection or there is some emotional reason for it. Psychosomatic illness means that illness because of unexpressed emotions. And we can know that it's that when there are tests conducted, the doctors have done that exam, physical exam, and there is no sign of illness. That indicates mental and emotional pain. One more uh, red flag about mental health issues can be uh, a person who's easily triggered and is bullying and presenting bullying behaviors, perhaps at school, in the workplace, in the family. Bullying behaviors, um, abusive behaviors, abusive language, yelling and shouting on a frequent base, you know, uh, frequently um, without a lot of provocation. Those can be signs that there could be a mental health issue that the person is dealing with, uh, does not know how to deal with it, and therefore is acting in that way. Sometimes people can shout at their kids or, uh, you know, animals. Uh, that's again signs of deregulation and deregulation is a red flag. And another uh, sign that's actually not a lot of people know that it could be connected to mental health, it's about not being able to stick to plans. If you make an appointment with someone and you're chronically late or somebody you know is chronically late, or they change their mind at the last minute. That also is a red flag for mental health. This could mean a social withdrawal. It could be uh, any number of reasons, perhaps connected to depression. Changes in appetite, either gaining a lot of weight or losing a lot of weight or just not being able to eat certain foods or um, you know throwing up foods um, bring always on a diet, these could again be connected to a mental health issue. And another, the tenth sign is the uh, lack of joy, you know, not being able to feel joy, feelings of emptiness, uh, not enjoying the activities that somebody used to enjoy before. And eleventh, easily triggered panic attacks, um, and uh, chronic anxiety, these also indicate mental health, uh, could be a reason and uh, it's important that these uh, issues are not ignored, you know. A tr the twelfth sign could be avoiding going out or feeling very underconfident about going out and meeting people. I've noticed that after the pandemic, um, it's become more difficult for some people because they got used to being isolated, used to being at home and going out, socializing, interacting with people, doing things in uh, their normal, uh, the way they used to before can bring on some panic and anxiety. Traveling, for example, after the pandemic can uh, be uh, quite anxiety provoking for a number of people.
and then these are some behavioral patterns that i want to bring up that may be actually um you know just part of that personality of that person they can become so internalized that they're like a personality and one of them is always sort of you know fighting in relationships uh, conflict in relationships, a pattern of having relationships where there's always some kind of um, fight, you know, that can show some personality uh, issues or something related to that. Um, inability to stick to a job, leaving jobs, leaving careers uh, quickly, you know, just a couple of years and, you know, just not being able to stick to a career or a job long enough. That itself also indicates mental health issues. And lastly is unstable relationships, relationships that are very short in duration and they uh, just sort of, you know, end and or there is uh, complete, uh, you know, ghosting, uh, you, you know, they just sort of disappear from, from that person's life. Those are all red flags for mental health. Now that you know about these red flags, um, it's important to realize that what, what's happening with someone at a mental level is actually a very private experience. It's a very internal experience and without their permission or their um, desire for help, nobody can actually help them. So if you're somebody who likes to take care of your mental health and you want uh, loved ones or somebody you notice could be having a mental health issue and you want to help them, the best way you can help them is by um, looking after your own mental health and making sure that their issues or their mental health does not affect you as much. So there is a need for boundaries in mental health issues, whereas it's a little bit different when it's a physical health issue. Somebody broke an arm, you can go in, you can be helpful, you can say, hey, let me do this for you or do that for you. But when it's mental health, you can't really rescue anyone. You, you, you know, they might not like that at all. The most you can say to them and is that, hey, I am here for you if you would like to talk about this. However, helping someone with a mental health issue as a family member is extremely difficult and it's not advisable many times because the dynamics of the family and the closeness of that relationship and uh, can be affected. Um, you know, I think therapists are here for a reason and that reason is that it is easier to talk to a stranger who is trained in that area and who can actually help than to kind of discuss this with people who may have no background, no knowledge and also it can bias your relationship with them. So just some ideas around these red flags uh, and um, you know I just want to say that sometimes these videos can be triggering because they're about issues that are difficult and tough to face. Um, if you're watching a video like this and it affects you, it drains you, just go out for a walk, do something cheerful. Try not to get too bogged down in how you're feeling or how the rest of the world could be feeling right now. And this is especially for my empathic friends and caring people out there who tend to put other people at the front of uh, their mind. Um, this is a note for you to take it easy. Um, and if you find that these types of psychology videos affect you, then um, take time out. Take time out, maybe listen to a, a, one or two and then uh, move on to something else. I appreciate all of you who watch these videos. I am thrilled to hear any, uh, to see any comments um, and I love responding to them. If you think this video can help someone else, feel free to share it um, or leave a comment below. I appreciate any feedback that I get. Thank you so much. Bye now.